Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today we're going to talk about the key down event and how you can use it to react to specific keystrokes in Microsoft Access. Now in yesterday's video, we learned about the key press event and key press is cool. It's got a lot of cool uses, but it generally only works with characters that you type on the keyboard, like letters, numbers, and such, but it doesn't work with the special keys, okay? F1, Control T, uh, all those kinds of special keys, arrow keys, those kinds of things. All right, so the key down event will detect non-character keys. F1, arrow, control, those kinds of things. All right, stuff that you normally wouldn't like fill into a, a text box in your access form, for example. But you might wanna know when the user presses it. All right, key down occurs before key press in case you're using them both together, which you can. All right, and key down is not case sensitive. So A is always gonna return a 65 because it's tied to the key, not the actual value that's returned. I know, it's weird. All right, let's see it in action. First, if you haven't watched yesterday's key press video, go watch that first so this will make a whole lot more sense after you've watched that one, okay? Okay, you'll find a link down below. All right, let's take a look at a key down event. We'll do the same thing. We're gonna go into the first name field as we did yesterday. This time go to key down. And yes, there's a key up too. We'll talk about key up in a different video. Today's key down. All right. Now, key down is right here. It doesn't get a key ASCII like key press does. It gets a key code and a shift value. Now, key code is similar to key ASCII, but it's not exactly the same thing. It can be different, all right? A lot of the key codes are the same, but not all of them. So let's, let's take a look at some, all right? Let's just message box the key code, and then we're gonna set key code equal to zero. If you remember yesterday, if we set key ASCII to zero, it nullifies the key. We're gonna do the same thing here. I wanna see what the key code is, and then just blank it. Not blank it like, you know, taking a nap blanket, like blank the code. That way it doesn't actually press it. Right, if I press F1, I don't want the help system popping up. Okay, so let's just see what we get here. Save that, let's come back out here. And let's click on this and I'm gonna hit the A key on the keyboard. A, 65, that's the same as what I was expecting before. Most of these are the same. If I press space, 32. Most of them are the same, not always. All right, what about shift A? Let me hit shift, oh, oh, oh wait, oh, wait, oh, hold on. As soon as I hit the shift key, I got a 16. What's that? Well, 16 is the key code for the shift key itself. It's got its own key code. That's why it's different from the ASCII characters. Because a 16 ASCII is what data link is, I don't know what the, some of these are, right? So it's not the same. Some of them are different. All right, if I do uh, F1, it's 112. Okay, now there is a whole list of these constants if you really want to use those instead of the numbers. They're on Microsoft's website. I'll put a link to the VB key code constants down below. Here they all are, right? You got uh, shift key, enter key, you got right here, VB key right, VB key down, all these VB key. I mean, I, I never use these. I'll be completely honest with you. I never use these. All right, why? Because I just look it up. I just have access. Tell me what it is, right? So if I want F1, I just come in here and message box. What's F1? Oh, okay, it's 112, right? <laughs> then I just come in here and put 112 in here. Now, what about that 16 before? Well, 16 is the actual key code for the shift key, but the shift parameter also gets a value too, indicating whether or not the shift control and or alt keys are pressed. So that looks like this, all right? If just the shift key is pressed, that value comes in as one. If just the control is pressed, it's two. If just alt is pressed, it's four. And you can mix and match them. So three means shift and control is pressed. Five means shift and alt is pressed, right? Seven is all three of them, four plus two plus one. All right, alt shift would be five, okay? Uh, uh, control alt would be six, and so on. So let's do, give me the key code and a, a dash and the shift value. Okay, save that, let's come back out here, click in here, and I'm gonna press just the A again. I got a 65 and a zero because the shift key wasn't pressed. Okay, how about if I hit just the shift key? 
16 and a one. See that? Because the shift key is pressed if I'm pressing the shift key. Makes sense? How about the control key? See, 17 and two, alt, 18 and four. Okay, now, how do you react to these keys being pressed? Well, instead of message boxing it, which I'm gonna leave this here because later on, you might want to, you know, pop in here and say, hey, what is this key that I want to know? So leave that there, you can always unrem it later. All right, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna say, okay, I only want to react to, let's say the A key. All right, so if key code equals 65 is A, right, then message box A was pressed. And I'm gonna cancel the key code then, key code equals zero, and if. Okay, so anything else, if any other key gets pressed, it's gonna ignore it, but if an A was pressed, it's gonna say A was pressed and ignore the key. All right, you ready? So I can come in here, I'm hitting other keys, I'm hitting other keys. If I hit an A, boom, A was pressed, see? And then it blanks the key, the A doesn't go into the box. Make sense? Okay. What if I only wanna do that with a capital A? Well, then shift will be one, right? So, and shift equals one, then let's tell you what it is here. Well, we, we got it down right in here, right? And it's shift A was pressed. Okay, save it, come back out here. All right, I'm typing characters, I'm typing lowercase a's, I'm typing characters, I'm doing shift A. Oh, look at that, shift A was pressed because the shift is one and the key code is 65. Okay, what if you want control F2? All right, well, let's see, control is two, okay. So we'll say if shift, it's gonna be shift as the name of the variable. Shift is two. And then what did I want? What did I say? Control, we'll put it right in here. Control F2, control F2. Now we gotta find out what F2's code is. So we'll unrem this real quick. And I'll put, a, I'll put an exit sub here too. All right, so I wanna see what it is. All right, save it. All right, what is F2's code? Let me click in here and hit F2. All right, it's 113 is F2. All right, now armed with that information, I can come in here and put 113. And then I'll rem this stuff back out again because we don't need you anymore. That's just, a, you could make a second button or a second field for this if you want to. We're gonna be doing a lot of it. All right, let's see now, Shift F2, all right. I'm typing in some stuff, I'm hitting some other keys. I hit just regular F2, what is regular F2? Okay, there we go. And then I'll hit Shift F2 and, ooh, oh, it's zoomed in. Shift F2 zoomed in, oh wait, okay, that was right. Shift F2 zoomed in, it opened up the zoom box. That was my mistake. I don't want Shift F2, I want Control F2. Okay, my mistake. So now I'm gonna hit Control F2. Oh, there it is, okay. See, the lesson works when I, when I do the right thing. <laughs> All right, how about a difficult one? How about Control Alt Space Bar? See if you can figure out how to do Control Alt Space Bar. Pause the video, figure it out, and if you're if you're able to figure it out, well, either way, post a comment down below and let me know if you got it or not. All right, and I'll do it in just a second. Go ahead, hit the pause. Go do it right. Go go on, do it. All right, so Control and Alt together add up to six. All right, Control plus Alt is six, so the shift value is gonna be six, and we know that space is thirty-two. Right, space is still thirty-two on this thing. Right, that's space. It's the same as the ASCII chart, okay? So what I want here is key code to be 32 and shift is gonna be equal to six. And that's gonna be control, alt, spacebar. Do it in there right. All right, save it. All right, throw a debug compile on once in a while, come back out here, ready? Control, alt, spacebar, there it is, okay? And yes, I tried, you cannot capture control, alt, delete. <laughs> That's a special Windows key that is programmed at the system level. Nothing can grab control, alt, delete by design. Microsoft doesn't want anybody having that. That's a special character. <laughs> Interestingly enough, you can capture the Windows key if I hit the Windows key, but your start menu will still open. It's on my other monitor. The Windows key is 91. But, and then my shift, uh, my uh, my Windows start menu did pop up on my other screen. 
I record on screen too, so you wouldn't see it, but it, you can capture it. Now, I mentioned before, I do cover key down in a bunch of other videos. This one here handles uh, air, the arrow keys and text boxes. This video will allow you to put tabs into a long text field by hitting the tab key, which normally would move you to a different field. This will actually insert four spaces in there. So that's, that's one way you can capture the tab character and use it to insert spaces instead. This one shows you how to build a context uh, sensitive help system. So if your user does hit F1, which you know how to capture now, then you can uh, pop up a form and have help just for that field or click a button. And in this video's extended cut for the members, I show you how to use uh, the key down event to move up and down left and right in a continuous form, just like in an Excel spreadsheet. There's a trick you gotta do to get that to work. And again, that's in the extended cut for the members in this video. So that's gonna do it for today. I've got a couple more videos on some similar topics coming up in the next couple of days. I'm gonna teach you how to hit control A to select long text, that's gonna be good. I'm gonna show you how to bypass um, and to disable cut, copy and paste, which that's gonna be interesting. One of the problems with key press is that it doesn't stop the user from pasting values in. And uh, we might do a little bit with the key up event. We'll see about that one. But that's going to do it for your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. A special thank you and shout out to our diamond sponsors. Juan Soto with Access Experts Software Solutions, manufacturing experts specializing in Access and SQL Server. Sammy Shama with Shama Consultancy, a certified Microsoft Access expert who offers personalized one-on-one -on -one tutoring. And Amanda Nicole Consulting, specializing in helping businesses move from complex Excel sheets to an access database. You'll find links to the Diamond Sponsors in the description down below the video. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't wanna to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for
paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.